Hi again, it's Chrissy here for part two of a general reintegration brief for families. We just covered tips for homecoming, which I'll remind you is the one day, the one day the service member returns home. Now we're gonna talk about the renegotiation, which is a little different than the reintegration. So think too, and spouses are the ones I'm looking at whenever I talk about this specifically, spouses and parents. You have taken on a significant amount of responsibility after a service member has left during a deployment and you have been functioning as a spouse, a parent, or a significant other without their presence. So one of the things that we want to really suggest, uh, suggest is don't implement a change of command ceremony. So those of you who don't know, change of command ceremony is when we uh, let go, a commanding officer will move on to a different job or retire and a executive officer will then become a commanding officer. And basically that's just a handing over of responsibilities um, during a ceremony. Resist the change to feel like that needs to happen. Now, I would say that sometimes service members are a little bit more used to coming in and wanting to take charge, but I do talk to spouses, particularly parents, who will have been working so hard that they will think, oh, someone else is here. I just want to exit the situation and be gone for a while. Now, if you've tried that before and that works for your family, that's great. But consider the needs of the children at that time. Consider what's going on in your household. I mean, even pets sometimes will have a period where they need to warm up to a service member. So resist the change of, I've been doing all of the responsibilities, now it's your turn to do, to do all the responsibilities. Now, I would say that in some of the conversations I have with spouses and family members of people who have taken on a head of the household responsibility during a deployment, most of them feel like they have gained some independence, that they have learned some things in the process, and they are not necessarily ready to just become a second XO or someone who just takes orders all of a sudden. So consider what that looks like and what's working for the parent and the significant other back at home and what the new roles of the service member will look like. There's no one way where I'm gonna mark the line and say this is the jobs of the service members and these are the jobs of the family members back at home. What works for your family is what works for your family. But realize there might be a period of time where you might need to renegotiate and talk about what kind of responsibilities will be shared and which ones will be held um, in the responsibility of other people. Um, let yourself have plenty of time to readjust. I ask in my classes, how long is the reintegration process? It is six weeks on average. Our research-based evidence show that it is six weeks on average for a family to go, to go through the reintegration process, okay? Can be less, can be more, and both of those might be normal, but if you feel like you have been at it for a while, things are not looking like they're going on an upswing, they just continue to get more difficult, that might be a good time to reach out to someone at Fleet and Family and let us either provide you with additional resources or some counseling or some other um, general education resources that could help you. So you have to communicate your needs as well, correct? So think too about some of the responsibilities that you took on um, as family members and what the service member might want to do as well. It's not unusual for a service member to want to have a period of time where they just decompress and allow for that, um, but maybe set some ground rules beforehand. Like, hey, in about three days, I would like to have a little bit of help with this, that, or the other. We've had some things that need to be fixed around the house. Um, we had this this was broken i would like help with that when you're ready so think too about some of the phrases that really work um if if not now when and using i statements are really important so instead of you are not doing this you have just been sitting around you have not been taking care of the kids say something to the effect of i feel blank when blank 
happens. So for example, I feel extra stressed, frustrated, and a little annoyed when I am still taking on the responsibility of putting the kids to bed every night. And then find a way to kind of gradually involve them in that process. So asking for help is a good way to do that. And then sometimes inviting a service member back into the responsibilities of the home. So it sounds kind of ridiculous to say, I invite you to take out the trash today. But it could you could say something like, I would really appreciate it if you could take out the trash um, for me. That would make me happy. Um, in, in a non-aggressive and uh, passive aggressive tone, which is difficult if you're frustrated. But the key is to do this early and not wait until you are very angry and it will come out in a negative way. But ask the service member too some of the ways that they want to feel more involved in the daily household routines and activities. And maybe they have some ideas that you haven't thought about yet. Okay? But communicate your expectations and communicate your needs, okay? All right, I'll see you back for part three of the reintegration brief.